I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Valve's new VR headset might actually change everything. I want to talk about something that I didn't think we were going to be talking about here on the channel because I really thought that VR was dying. By the way, when I did a whole VR video a few months ago, a bunch of people jumped in who love VR. Like, it's not dying, you're lying. Okay, how many people do you know are actually buying VR headsets and how many people are actually playing VR games and how many of these big software companies are actually doing incredible software for these VR headsets? Not many. I mean, you can talk about Batman Arkham, but I mean, Sony isn't doing anything with the PSVR 2. Let's be honest. I mean, don't try to gaslight me. I'm not an idiot. Sales numbers are terrible, right? I mean, that's why they slashed the price on that thing to try to get this thing moving. Have you, by the way, ever seen like a stack of these VR headsets from Sony at like the mall or anything like that? They're covered in dust. So anyway, meta pushing into mixed reality, you know, more than games, let's be honest. And even Apple Visions Pro, they, you know, apparently it's pretty impressive. Um, I know the screen is imp impressive, but it's like, honestly, the first Apple product that I just didn't give any rat's ass about at all because it felt like a weird experiment. Nobody really asked for it. No one wants to be walking around their house with this thing on with the creepy eyes that, sh that blink and all of that stuff with that battery puck on the side. Like no one really wants to use that. Let's be honest, but they just rolled out a new one. Okay. But anyway, but Valve just came out with, you know, came out of nowhere with their brand new VR headset called the Steam Frame. Of course, they announced it this week. And after really digging through, I've been watching so many just different hands-on videos and, and people who have spent quite a bit of time with this and who've been enthusiasts of VR and who know a lot about the other headsets, who own Quest 3s and stuff. I think we could be looking at a genuine game changer for VR. I'm going to say that. Maybe even a turning point. Maybe it actually becomes more accessible for more people. And I don't say that lightly because I really think VR is kind of on its way out. So let me explain what I mean here. I've been thinking a lot about this over the past couple of days since this launched because there's a problem with VR that no one wants to talk about, right? Before we get into this new Valve headset, let's be honest, what, what people really don't like about it. VR has a massive barrier to entry that no one wants to admit. And the barrier isn't the price. I mean, you can slash the price all you want, that's fine. It's not the motion sickness, which yes, can affect a lot of people. It's the cords. It's the getting set up to actually play on this device. All of those cords, are, are things charged? So VR historically has been a freaking nightmare of cables, dongles, breakout boxes, cameras, battery packs, and little adapters that were clearly designed in the seventh circle of hell. I mean, I'm, oh my God, I remember when I first got that first PlayStation VR 1. Do you guys remember that thing? What a nightmare. I remember setting it up. I was in the attic where we had our gaming room in New Jersey and there were just cords everywhere. It was, the thing was an absolute abomination. Every time I wanted to play something, I felt like, you know, I was performing open heart surgery, like, you know, just trying to get the thing set up. One HDMI into the breakout box, another HDMI, like back out to the TV, power cable, camera cable, headset cable, <laughs> then the cable that plugs into the cable that plugs into the headset. It was a nightmare. By the time I got everything untangled, I didn't even want to play anymore. It's like, oh, it's dinner time. So if you move your foot the wrong way, you'd yank the whole damn thing out of the wall, crash back into reality, literally. And then when you were trying to store the thing, everything would get all messy. It was, it was really a nightmare. It didn't look pretty. VR never became sort of pick up and play. And that's why people stopped using their headsets. The friction was too high. Also, add on top of that, of course, yes, you have all the cords. The other big piece of this is the software. Like, yes, there are some compelling pieces of software out there. Like, again, when I did that video a few months ago, I heard from a number of people like, but you haven't played this game. Okay. Yeah, there are some great games, to be sure. But you add the fact that there's not a lot of software and there's not a lot of development, even coming from like first party PlayStation or Sony titles. So what Valve is doing with this new headset, though, is I think is completely different. Number one, it's simple. It's exactly what VR needed to be. And for the first time in high-end like PC VR, we're actually looking at a device that is truly wireless. No cables. The battery is in the back of the thing, right on your head. So no external battery pack like the Apple Vision Pro with this weird dongle and you gotta carry it like in a hip pouch, like, like, a, like I'm carrying a gun. Like it's the most ridiculous thing ever. No dongles hanging off your cheeks. No belt mounted contraptions like the, the Vision Pro. I'll just read right from their website what it says about this. VR and non-VR gaming. Steam Frame is a streaming first wireless VR headset plus controllers that can handle your whole Steam library. 
Step into immersive VR or lean back and enjoy your non-VR catalog. And it supports standalone play as well. So I'm not streaming from some other device. I can download and play games right there. Valve is using a dedicated six gigahertz wireless link, no cords. And from all the reviews of people I've seen who've had pre, you know, uh, early time on with this, have said it's smooth, crystal clear, no noticeable lag. They're not using those sort of out of date, older optics. They're using the pancake lenses that just look fantastic. The refresh rate looks amazing. And they're also doing something which is incredible, which is really rendering a sort of in real time where your eyes are looking. A lot of times in VR, you're looking at something and then you look off and it takes, it, you know, it takes a second for it to pull it together. And that's where I get the motion sick. That's where it gives me like a headache. But apparently, and I haven't played with it yet, Valve, if you're watching, please, come on. I'd love to test this out. Um, there's no, it's like no noticeable lagging here. So when your eyes are moving to these different, different spots, yes, it's rendering, but it's doing it so fast you're not noticing. This really, I think, changes everything because suddenly VR becomes what it's always, what it always should have been. Pick it up, put it on and play. You're in the game and you're playing. That's the beauty of like the Steam Deck, right? That's the beauty of like the Nintendo Switch is pick up, I hit power, boom, I'm right in my game. That alone will make this the first VR headset that I actually want to use maybe daily and actually dive into some of these games. Plus, it also is surprisingly comfortable from what I've been hearing. Again, Apple just redesigned their Apple Vision Pro because people were complaining about how heavy it felt on their head. This is light, sure, cool, but this is heavy. Now they completely redesigned. They re basically didn't redesign anything with the face part of it. They redesigned the strap. That's where like the bulk of their past two years of design went was the strap, putting the weight balance in the back to make it more comfortable. So let's talk about the design of this thing. I mean, the headset is around 435 grams, pretty lightweight. Valve did something smart here. They put half of the weight in the back. So they've done something that Apple just redesigned and did themselves, which is put the battery pack in the back so it actually doesn't feel like your, your whole head is like sagging forward. So instead of, you know, like feeling like a brick is strapped to your forehead, the weight is balanced here. And that's, you know, that's what the Sony VR2 feels like. It feels like your whole face is being kind of pulled down. And a lot of reviewers saying I could move freely around with it. Like I was so tied to cords before that now moving around, I'm not worried about hitting a cord and knocking some, unplugging something. This is huge because a VR headset should disappear. It shouldn't feel like workout equipment. And when there's no cable tugging at your head every time you turn around, the immersion like jumps to a whole new level. You feel like you're actually in it. Now you say to yourself, wait a second though, isn't like VR like dying? I mean, again, that was my next thought. Why is Valve doing this now? What do you stand to gain from this? VR seems to be on life support. Sony has abandoned the PSVR too, basically by all accounts. I mean, let's be honest, right? They're even like, even as part of your PSN subscription, they've even removed like VR games from there. You think they would just have a great library in that section for you? No, they're like, when they remove title, they're removing VR games? Come on. Meta is now pivoting to like productivity headsets. Apple is selling a $3,500 device that needs a battery pack dangling from your hip. And Apple really pushes the idea that this is like a productivity device that you can sort of sit in a room and have multiple windows open like Minority Report and you can be productive. And yeah, if you want to sit back and watch some videos of your kids or watch a movie, yeah, that's fine too. So they're still trying to figure this out, but they're really not pushing gaming at all from Apple. So it feels like we're coming to the end of this like VR hype cycle like we did with 3D. Remember those 3D televisions? But maybe we're wrong. Valve isn't treating this like a traditional VR headset. Maybe that is the key. They're treating it like something entirely different, like a gaming device that lives on your face. This is where things get really interesting to me from uh, on a number of levels, because it's not just VR. It's like a personal portable PC gaming display. So Valve is showing off a feature that instantly made me go, oh, wait a second. This is kind of brilliant because now you can play non VR games inside the headset like a floating screen. In the demo, they were playing Hades 2, and people were, you know, they're lying, just lying back on the couch using the new Steam Frame controllers, the new split Steam, uh, Steam Frame controllers. That's hard to say five times fast. So this makes the headset more like a new wave of like cinema glasses, sort of like those uh, Vitcher glasses or the the other ones, oh, is it the X Real Air ones. There's a whole bunch of them, right? And I've been very fascinated about those. I might actually want those for Christmas, I was thinking, you know, like be able to take an airplane ride and you can just kind of sit back in your chair and you've got these 
vitre glasses on your face, but you can actually play a video game because it's like it's almost like a hundred inch screen, like right in your eyes. Just bring a controller, or just. But the thing is, with that, you, you get this giant screen. But all of those, like the vitre glasses and all that other stuff, they all require a cord, a battery pack, a dongle, something. You got to plug it into your Nintendo Switch. You got to do all of that. And trust me, even one of those little cable cables can ruin the experience for people. This Valve headset fixes that. No light leakage, no cables, no glowing screen to annoy your spouse while you're trying to play before bed. My wife hates it when I like bring my Nintendo Switch to bed or a Steam Deck. She's like flip, flipped out the lights and she goes, she cannot stay awake. I mean, she's like out at like nine o'clock. And if I, I don't like going to bed that early, but she's like, come in, come to bed. And she just wants me nearby and I get that. But then I'm like, I, I'm not ready for bed yet. So I might read a book. I have a book light, you know, whatever. I might be re re read my Kindle. But if I feel like gaming, she doesn't like the, the, the glow of the screen, like a lighthouse on the side of the room. And I totally get that. If I want to fall asleep and she's awake, I don't want a light kind of shining off. Even if she's wearing, even if she's wearing like one of those face masks. Can you turn that thing off? I'm trying to sleep. Just turn that off. Go to bed. So this solves that entirely. Total darkness, total immersion. There's no light bleeding because it's right on my eyes. So she can't see it. Just the click, click, click of my buttons. That's, she gets annoyed by that as well. So I've got to, anyway, it's a balance. We have a, we have an air filter that goes in our room at night and some white noise. So that's why that gets turned on. Not because of that, but you know, that's on in the background. So I've got to try to keep it quiet, you know? So I'm not playing some heavy call of duty or something like that where I'm firing buttons like crazy, you know, play like an RPG and I'll be fine. But anyway, my, I digress. So Valve built a device that in many ways like makes sense in 2025. And here, I think this is why this matters because VR is not dying. Bad VR is dying. I think that's the conclusion that I'm coming to here. The, the friction is dying. The cables are dying. The overcomplicated nonsense is dying. And I, there's word that half of like Apple's Vision Pro team is now working on glasses, similar to like the Vitcher glasses or the MetaQuest glasses or the Meta glasses, you know? So you can actually have a screen there, but they look like normal glasses. So this is different, of course. So this, this headset is what VR in 2025 in many ways should be. It's wireless, it's simple, it's comfortable, it works with your PC, it plays your normal games. I think that's the other part of it that I forgot to mention. It's like, if I just want to, it's, I'm, I just want to sit down and play like a normal game that's not VR, I can do that because it's, it's, it's like an extra display. So now I can just, if I want to sit down and play Stardew Valley, which I've never played, but you know, I want to play Luigi's Mansion 2 or something like that. I wouldn't be able to do that on a PC. So I guess I'm using bad examples here, but uh, No Man's Sky, right? There's another one, like No Man's Sky. I just wanna put on you know, No Man's Sky right on my face, and play that at night, right? Also, it has clarity similar to the Quest 3. So they've done something great here, which is like beautiful. Clarity has lenses that reduce distortion. So you're not getting all of that like, you know, motion blur stuff. They've done incredible stuff to reduce and almost eliminate motion blur. It uses the six gigahertz link for like lagless PC streaming. And it also has the ability to play it as, as Valve says right here on their website, also supports standalone play too. So now has your full Steam library right there. To me, I mean, that's, that's everything. Steam is the heart of this PC gaming experience. Valve is about to put the entire library directly into a headset that you can then slip on like a pair of sunglasses, kick back on the couch and play. So is this perfect? No, I think there's some limitations on contrast stuff and other things like that, but I'll let the people like a digital foundry handle all that. We haven't tested the battery yet. We don't know how long the battery is going to last. We don't know what the standalone performance might look like. Is it going to be limited? Um, the ecosystem is going to take some time to grow, of course. And real world wireless performance isn't always as clean as a controlled demo because maybe your house has some brick walls. It's just not going to be as clean of an experience. And we know what streaming games looks like right now. I know playing with the PlayStation Portal is a nightmare for me. Unfortunately, yes, I live outside of Denver, Colorado and in an area where we just we only have my only option is 35 megabytes upload. That's it for my Internet speeds. Isn't that crazy? Um. I, I, but, and they say it's coming eventually, we'll get symmetrical speeds and all that. But at this point, that's all I've got. That's all I've got to work with. Um, 10 years ago in New Jersey, uh, Verizon Fios 
fiber to the home. I had a thousand up, a thousand down. It's just, anyway, it's just crazy. Don't get me started. It's been a nightmare. But anyway, a lot of those devices like the PlayStation Portable, the download speeds are not even the most important part. It's the upload speed. That's the most important part. So if you're on wireless, you're on Wi-Fi, and it's also not even Wi-Fi 7, again, on the portal, the PlayStation Portal, you can have some problems. So if you've got a brick house, your, your mesh network is not so great, your Wi-Fi is not so great, you know, might not be as great. We'll see. But even with all those caveats, this feels like the first like VR or XR device in years that actually makes sense for everyday gamers. So I'm pretty excited about it. I don't think, I don't really think of this as like a VR headset. I almost think of it as like a portable PC gaming monitor strapped to your face, but it does have full VR support when you want it. You want to jump up and do some workouts and do some synth waves, slapping of whatever, <laughs> you can do that too. Want to get up and play some sword games and play, pretend you're a lightsaber to Jedi? Great. Just want to kick back on the couch under a blanket, not annoy the people next to you and watch something while they're watching Dancing with the Stars and you don't feel like doing that? That's why this is different. That's why this could be a game changer. It's still a little goofy, obviously, on the front of your face. It looks weird. I'm not a big fan of that at all, but we're never going to be able to solve for that, will we? So that's why for the first time in a long time, VR actually feels exciting again. So... Um, I'd be curious your thoughts on this. Are you planning to pick up the Steam frame? Are you excited about it? What are your caveats? What do you think? Yeah, maybe I'm not into this. I don't know. What questions do you still have about this? I'm curious. So let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. And uh, yeah, again, I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this new Steam ecosystem because it's exciting when something like this happens in gaming for sure. So until next time, everyone, have a great night.